So, Mark, I was this many years old when I learned that the gondolas at the Venetian are powered by electric motors. The gondoliers aren't actually propelling those along, although they're steering them. Did you know this? I, it's actually a question that never crossed my mind. I, I never really cared. But it makes sense. You know, our friend Ryan isn't very buff. So, I mean, <laughs> he pushes it. So now we know why. It's funny. Uh, somebody asked him on Twitter whether it was him in the this picture that somebody had posted about it the promotional picture. And he said they used to use him, but now he's too old. But uh, it's funny how like, and we'll talk about something later in the show that I didn't know either, how all these little things are in Vegas, cool things to learn, just like you, it had never crossed my mind, but it makes perfect sense that they would have a little help given the shallow two foot water that they have to navigate. Yeah. And it's cool that the, in the boats are lighter, so they don't need a ton. It's just like we said in Vegas, if you just walk around each property and, and, really deep dive it, you'll find stuff you've never seen before, even if you've been there 40 times, which is kind of insane to think about and something none of us really do like we should, you know, when you go stay somewhere, you should really walk around and look at every single thing you can if you're, if you're nerdy into Vegas like that. All right, Mark, as I teased on the last show, we got some new F1 renderings. And, you know, F1 is going to be trickling this stuff out throughout the year, and we'll cover it as it's interesting. I like seeing these renderings, seeing the course, the track. It kind of gives you an idea how the city's going to transform. And I've been in a couple cities that have had Grand Prix and watched how the streets transform, so it's kind of interesting. So it looks pretty. you got the sphere lit up. They're doing a good job of selling this. This is the long sale all the way through November when they hope that uh, gazillions of people will come and watch. Yeah, the sphere looks really cool in the renderings now. Will it look like that in person? We don't know. I mean, we're going to show you a clip of it glitching out or whatever. It doesn't look as cool. <laughs> but I'm sure it'll get, you know, near there. Uh, so that's the thing with renderings. Like, everything always looks perfect. It, it does. It, it really blew my mind, like, looking at these and seeing how much effort they're putting into building these grandstands, building out the road, and, like, how much is going to be different. Just getting around the city just for a weekend is insane. And it just shows you how much money they make off of these things if they're willing to put all this time and effort into it for such a short period of time. Someone on Twitter, I think maybe Vital Vegas, said, this is going to cause a war between locals and tourists, right? Locals are going to hate this. And just watching this sort of transform is going to be so ugly for anybody who has to be around there for the few weeks around. They're, first off, they're going to have to repave all these streets, and then they're going to have to start building the barriers weeks out. And, yeah, it's going to be ugly. But the paddock is also kind of progressing. We got some updates this last week or so of what the building is going. It's going up pretty quick, and it's transforming that whole area, and that's going to be a permanent structure. We know that Clark County has voted to uh, kind of have this race for 10 years at least, or at least to open up the possibility of that. They're committed for three years, but Formula One is going to be here for a long time. But this is the first race, right? This is the inaugural one. It's going to be the really special one, and they're going all out on that. And as you said about the sphere, yeah, we got some video of it fully testing now, or we think it's testing, maybe it's glitching. Yeah, we, we I, think it's, I think it's busted. They need to <laughs> hit the unplug it and plug it back in or something. I don't know. I can't wait, though. I mean, we've seen some basic testing, the dome and stuff like that. I really can't wait till the first time we see this thing fully lit up with a display that's like the final product, right? I mean, we'll see probably more stages of them testing all the different sections of the screen. But, uh, you know, it's getting there. And, you know, there's more news about whether MSG is going to make money on this and performers still haven't signed on. And uh, there's a lot of criticism, too, because 90% of the ticket revenue is going to U2 for their residency. So uh, where's MSG going to make any money, I guess, on beer sales and stuff like that? But I see that residency as a loss leader for them. Give them 90%. If they can put on an incredible show, I think all the other artists are going to follow suit. Yeah, I don't know. Like the 90% you two is just you're setting that bar where, you know, somebody else is going to come in and be like, well, you're only going to give me 30% or 50% or whatever the normal gate is that they get. And, and you're giving them 90%. It just seems like they're setting themselves up to lose there a bit. But going back to your point about locals hating F1. You know, they pretty much stay away from the strip, I imagine. And that's kind of similar anywhere. Like around here, Dream Cruise comes every summer. We're like a mile or two away from Woodward. And it's, I just get out of town because I can't stand it. People everywhere watching old cars drive by. And we were in Salem this past weekend. And I can't even imagine living there in October on the weekends. They probably hate it unless you just really love Halloween. But just the simplicity of getting home is probably a pain. So that's kind of wherever you live, whatever the big thing is there, the locals hate it, which is always funny. And speaking of races, the Mint 4 was this last weekend. I uh, had tickets, but I wasn't in town. 
So I missed it. I was considering coming back early and I just got back late last night, but I think the event went off without a hitch. If people don't know, that's basically off-road dirt race. The Mint 400 was a race way back in the day named after the Mint Hotel downtown, which is now part of Binion's or that tower that's part of Binion's. But they brought the race back uh, a few years back and I got to get to one of those. Have you ever wanted to do like a desert off-road race? I think being a spectator there would be pretty cool. Yeah, I think it'd be fun to watch. You know, those are always kind of crazy and and they're zipping around on their bikes and everything. So uh, that'd probably be something I'd go to more than uh, F1. I feel like F1 is going to be kind of crazy to get into and out of where these things are kind of set up out somewhere uh, where you got a little more space, get around easier, uh, check it out. And, you know, there's always crashes. Yeah, I just think it would be interesting out there, although the logistics sounded terrible with the parking passes and getting out into the desert and all that. But glad it went off well. Now, what didn't go off well was a stunt that David Blaine tried to do at his Resorts World uh, residency. I think he's 12 shows in now, and it's been fairly it's been fairly successful. Although he tried to do this stunt where he jumps 80 feet into a pile of boxes, I guess he missed, and then he dislocated his shoulder, and then they had doctors from the audience come on stage to relocate his shoulder right on stage in front of the entire audience, and then I think he finished the show, right? So, yeah, that's pretty, uh, there's a, that's pretty cool. There's a, lot to, there's a lot to unpack here, you know, boxes, unpacking, funny, I know. Um, <laughs> but first off, I didn't know magicians didn't just show their own videos, you know. <laughs> A la Chris Angel, where you just watch a video of them on stage. Uh, so that's kind of cool. And then secondly, like, y you see the box area that he lands is pretty big. There's, like, a, a bullseye that he's aiming for. Maybe they have, like, doubled up boxes or something in that little section. But he didn't miss by much. You wouldn't think it would be catastrophic. you think they would build it out that there's a pretty big area that he could miss and still come out okay. So that was kind of surprising. But I think he stabbed his hand in one uh, one thing where he was smashing cups, and they the audience picked one that had an uh, ice pick in it or something. So... He's definitely gotten hurt. You know, this is un unknown to Vegas where magicians are doing kind of crazy things since Siegfried and Rory. So go see it, I guess. You know, it's not a video of Chris Angel talking about Chris Angel. <laughs> ah, I guess this is good advertising for David Blaine, right? The, the more he hurts himself, the more people are going to want to go do it. As you said, in uh, according to the Review Journal, in his December 17th performance, he slammed his hand over three cups selected by audience members and uh, one of the cups has an ice pick and i guess he's supposed to avoid that but he didn't and the ice pick went through his hand he also had another night where he struggled to get out of this tank uh where he you know is underwater i guess and he was really struggling with that and david blaine you know he's known for all this stuff but he's not as young as he used to be so i wonder you know if the all these years of doing these types of things have taken a toll but I think this is evidence he's putting it all out there. So, you know, good for him for putting on a good show. Yeah, and it's a different kind of magic than you're used to when you go to these shows. Like a lot of animal stuff, a lot of sleight of hand, you know, type of tricks with Matt Franco and things like that. And this is more danger, you know, back to Houdini, old school. Matt, if you even want to call it magic, it's just kind of like doing stunts and risking your life for applause, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, and another question, how does he not have doctors on hand, like a medical team standing by with all these tricks, that you need people coming in from the audience to help you out like that? That is probably the weirdest thing I find out of all this. So much strangeness with David Blaine. All right, so I am embarrassed to admit this. After not knowing who Martin Yan is, and then not knowing about the Venetian boats, here's my trifecta. I did not know you could get to Jockey Club from inside the Cosmo Casino. But there was this tip on TikTok, and I saw Mark Meltzer share this on Twitter, so just to give him credit for sharing it, that you can get really cheap, like, groceries and things like that at the Jockey Club. And, you know, I knew Jockey Club was there, but I did not know that the entrance was in Cosmo. So you go through the Cosmo Casino. This video shows you exactly how to do it. Yeah, another one of those little things that uh, missed my radar. Yeah, just what we talked about early in the show is, you know, kind of explore and find everything. There's all these little elevators hidden that you don't know what they're for and, and all that stuff. Like, I would have never paid attention to this. It's not easy to find. They don't do a good job of, of showing you where to go. So even the person on the video is like, find this bar and then walk directly across the casino to find these elevators. And there's a tiny little sign that says uh, to the jockey club. But that's a great tip. And as Mark said, one of the few things that uh, were good on TikTok that actually taught you something. <laughs> yeah, it is a great tip, and it makes perfect sense, right? Cosmo is literally built around Jockey Club and envelops it on all sides. And there is a driveway to get back there for cars arriving and stuff. But for pedestrians, that's not really good, that little side alleyway. 
And so it makes perfect sense that they built an access to it. I just never knew. And yeah, how many more things do we have to discover about Las Vegas, Mark? So much. That's the fun of doing this show. Now, uh, Caesars, another week, another celebrity chef. This time, one that we've heard of, Guy Fieri. And he is opening his chicken guy restaurant with an exclamation point at Caesars Food Court at Caesars Palace. I think Bobby's Burgers are there. Guy is there. Yeah, this is to be expected. I do love Guy's Burgers. What so... about Shaq? Where's Shaq at? <laughs> we need Shaq's chicken. Yeah, well, we got a couple of Shaq's big chickens around town, just not in Caesars. They haven't teamed up with him yet. I mean, I'm just getting kind of tired of rehashing the same four celebrity chefs and doing like bringing either new celebrity chefs or maybe bring in a local thing that, you know, you want to promote uh, a taco place, something. I don't know. It just seems like they're so corporate and so set in their ways that they're just like, OK, guy, can you come up with a new concept for us? Because we can't bring anything unique. And I know Vegas is kind of like a transplant area where there's not a ton of homegrown restaurants. And this is a way they can show off chefs from around the country and stuff. But, you know, limited to two. You get two restaurants and then we move on, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, and you are kind of make a good point. As we see other places bringing in these food halls with these unique concepts or they're bringing in restaurants from other cities and other areas. We've seen Resorts World do that uh, with their very specific food hall. We've seen Aria bring in some concepts from Southern California. So that's sort of been the direction. And Caesars is just like copy-paste, you know, uh, Gordon Ramsay, copy-paste Guy Fieri. You know, they did bring in Martha Stewart. I think she was new, right? And and then Martin Yan, he's new. So they did bring in some new people. Yeah. So uh, I guess they are expanding, but it's definitely like a copy and paste thing. And he, this is sort of his type of food. So it could be good. But, you know, it's going to be like, what, a $20, $25 chicken sandwich probably. Yeah, or $25 for three chicken strips. It's just, it's going to be expensive. It's in a food court slash food hall. So uh, those are all pricey now. That used to be the cheap way to get, you know, you're drinking and you want something quick. And cheap you go to the food court now it's basically sit down restaurant prices um so hopefully it's good all right and the big story of this week is that land that the riviera once sat on right on las vegas boulevard and that's in front of the new convention center expansion next to pepper mill and uh, if you remember last year or actually a couple of years ago a chilean investor went into contract on that property for 120 million dollars he eventually backed out and lost his $7 million. So the LVCVA took a $7 million breakup fee. And now they're in contract to sell it for $125 million, or at least they have to vote actually uh, this week, the day this comes out, they're going to vote to basically accept this. I think it's going to get accepted. So I just want to be clear that as of the time we're recording this, it has not been. But basically the people who are going to buy it are the same people that are behind Harmon Corner and that new mall next to Crystal's on Harmon. Uh, so basically the people who put all the screens and made the Times Square of Las Vegas on Harmon and Las Vegas Boulevard, they are looking to buy it. So I would expect- More CBS. <laughs> a CBS, <laughs> definitely a mall going there, right? Uh, some sort of mall. Yeah, which is sad to see, you know, I was hoping for another casino property like they were talking. And I'm kind of wondering like, does this end up falling through too? And this is like a, the city of Las Vegas is a pawn shop where they just make money off of people putting a deposit to save it. And they make like seven, $8 million every year. And then people back out. That'd be kind of funny. Yeah. I mean, I, I see this as actually not a bad thing because hear me out. You have Fountain Blue opening up and you have Resorts World across the street. And this could really be a connector between those two things in a similar way to the way Harmon Corner connects basically Cosmo and Planet Hollywood. And it kind of would work similarly to that. So I could see it working well. And I think it's good that they're selling it to investors that have developed in Las Vegas on the Las Vegas Strip that have skin in the game. It means that there's probably more chance that it's going to go through. And the fact that it's not a casino project is probably not terrible either because we have so many other casino projects. And that's a pretty small piece of land, 10 acres. So any project was going to be fairly small anyway. Plus you have all the convention center crowd. I think it's good. I mean, uh, Pepper Mill might have some Neighbors, though, which could give it some competition up there. You just want another Taco Bell cantina with a wedding chapel, <laughs> don't you? Absolutely. And then we need to get another friend <laughs> to get married there so uh, we could do that. There is nothing like hanging out at the Taco Bell cantina at 1 a.m. on the strip and just people watching. Oh, it's, man. It's great stuff. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And it it gets packed and it's just, yeah, it's it's great P people watching. The other place I love to people watch is as people come down Dre's at like 2, 3 in the morning from the, the rooftop bar, you just sit there and you're like, playing a slot machine or whatever. And it's just the parade of people that look all exhausted and, and sweaty and all dressed to the nines, but look 
disheveled by this point. It's like a pre walk of shame, walk of shame, I guess. <laughs> and the women, of course, with their heels in their hands, because they finally give up and they can't walk in them yeah. anymore. That's one torturous thing I'll never understand. God bless them for wearing those things, but I would be wearing flats. There's dress up nicely, but find some nice, pretty flats because Vegas and high no, heels, no good. We should make a shoe that the, the heel just like shrinks into a flat halfway through the night. You click a button, boom, done. Billion dollar idea right there. And with that, we probably already have it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's our public service for the day. So somebody go out there and, uh, and make that <laughs> for you. That's why you guys watch the show. But yeah, let us know in the comments what you think about any of this. What do you think they're going to build up there on that former Riviera site? What do you think about the F1 renderings and the sphere testing and guy chicken exclamation point? Hit me up in the comments. We'll discuss it there. If you like the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you receive notifications of all of our videos. We release two videos a week, Tuesdays and Fridays, and we actually released one Friday last week instead of Saturday, so congratulations to us. So yeah, we'll see you guys back here in a couple days with a new show. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time. Have a good week.